All right. What a day, what a day, what a day. He had a great experience with a great team uh, using the Canon EOS R, the first Canon full frame mirrorless camera. So I'm just downloading from the shoot. If you guys joined in earlier today, you know, it was an amazing day. Uh, we kind of did a hustle and tried to get as many looks as possible. Hey, Kenny, how's it going? Tell what's happened to Willow. Boy, you're up for more punishment, Willow. Willow was amazing. Willow Star was our uh, model today, and she did outstanding. Mimi Lopez, thank you so much for all the help you did to help bring this shoot together. This was last minute, flying by the seat of our pants. Kenny, you're going to love this camera, man. This is a new tool, and it's amazing. Cheers. Just uh, having a little bit of uh, Woodford Reserve, bringing the energy level back down. So, um, it was outstanding. Mimi, we got to do something at the St. Jane. I love that Art Deco Hotel. So, just give it a couple seconds here. So, um, I'm downloading the card. I don't know how many files we shot, but it was an extraordinary day. I have to give thanks to everybody that participated. Willow Star, of course, she's such an extraordinary model. It allowed me to focus on the camera and playing with it because I'm still learning all the features and and things of that nature and the functionality because it is different ergonomically than what we're doing. Hey Jay, how's it going? How's things in, in Japan? Or no, Taiwan, Taiwan, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it was a great experience. All in all, I'd say the only downside so far to the camera is me, my learning curve and just the different technology and operation. It's like, oh wait, I want some exposure compensation. And my mind goes back to muscle memory of, oh, how did I do that? Where's my thumb wheel? When again, I customized it so that the exposure compensation is on the front control ring. And then I used the touch slider bar um, to tap it left, it goes to 100 ISO, tap it right, it goes to 6400 ISO. Hey Bev, how's it going? David Bergman, how'd your shoot go today? I know, still learning how to shoot mirrorless, it is freaky. David, did you find it took a while and still is to get used to like when you fire a frame, you don't lose the blackout because I shoot with two eyes open because you're used to that blackout and it's like, oh wait, oh that's cool. And then I put it in silent mode, I took it to an actual event yesterday. Uh, one of our clients at an event yesterday and I put it in silent mode when they were having some intimate moments and the dad is standing next to me and he's elbowing me and he says, get this, get this, aren't you getting this? And I show him, I'm like, I'm getting it. And it was completely silent and he goes, oh, that's amazing. It didn't disrupt the moment, but, but yeah. So um, that's the only negative I've come across so far. It definitely is more like I would say responsiveness and function, not functionality, but just use of the camera is like a 5D Mark IV. Would, it, would I drop my 1DX? No way. My 1DX, that's a whole different beast, you know, in terms of what that does. So it's just another tool in my kit, but I do see amazing purposes for this, especially if you love to shoot wide open. I mean, oh my God, I was using my 200 1.8 non IS, the very first of the uh, 2018 in the EOS line. And it worked great. It worked with face detect, it worked with eye detect. So um, I'm using photo mechanic here to ingest. Let's check the task. So it's about a third of the way in. So I was photographing using RAW plus JPEG. Normally I don't do that. But hey, Eric Stoner, how's it going? I'm excited to see the uh, beta version of DPP raw decode to actually see and get into some of the raw depth of these files, but with the uh, new file format, CR3. But I have to say the JPEGs are outstanding. The prints I made for James and the other prints I've been making have been killer. So, you know, I was experimenting with that black and white look with the half black, half white. And I, of course, James was great and it looked wonderful. Hey, Ken, how's it going? You're gonna love the mirrorless. Um, but I, Willow had this top hat, she had this um, amazing stylist, Carolyn Shaw, thank you so much, and she brought some clothing, and Crystal Johnson came, and they helped stylize this thing and bring it all together. So they did this lace top, 
and it's very Fosse-esque, you know, so it was like uh, all that jazz kind of a feel, but no offense to James. Hey, Frank, how's it going? How you doing, my friend? So let me pull this over. I'll flip the camera around and you guys can see this. And again, if you have questions, drop them in the feed and I will get back to it. But come on, people, look at this. You know, the, the beautiful top and Willow just posing so great. And I'll show you some frames later on when we were shooting in bright sunlight. And I was using uh, AI Servo and Willow was running away from me and we found this little shaft of bright sunlight and she was in this beautiful kind of uh, princess ball gown type of dress. Forgive me, Caroline, I don't know exactly what type of dress that is, but the light was sick on her, but the dynamic range between how bright the dress was and the shadow detail was kick butt. So, all right, uh, and this was all done with speed lights. So let me see, can I pop this here? And you guys can watch as I kind of scroll through. It would be cool if I could open up another monitor and see the Facebook question. Sorry for the unsteadiness. I'm trying to uh, just put it back on the, this is better here. Sorry, I want to be steady. Um, here we go. Bring it around. There we go. And I'm sorry about this, but cool. There we, there we go. You guys can see it. All right. So let's see if we could get down to a few of those. Yeah, I just loved this look and scenario. I mean, come on, people. Really? This is crazy. So I was using uh, one of my new favorite lenses is the EF85 1.5 with IS. All right. It's like high definition. So folks, this is in camera JPEG. You gotta see the resolve on this pup. This is what's so exciting about mirrorless, right? So that's the full frame, okay? What we see, all right, now let's zoom in. And this is with face and eye detect. Come on, we could see every eyelash, every pore, everything. And this is default in camera, no added sharpening, nothing at all, right? This is uh, the black and white preset that I created in, can no, not even the black and white preset I created, it's the standard monochrome setting in camera. So that's just crazy. But you can get an idea of the dynamic range. There's no fill on the shadow side, and yet you can still see, let's go into the shadow eye look at that look at that dynamic range I had on this side so we'll call it camera left um, an S uh, Speedlight 600 EXRT in a rapid box strip light with diffusion and grid so there was nothing on this side for it to bounce off of hit what we're getting is a little wrap sure from the backlighting of the white background all right, so let's pop out. Let me, uh, for a second here, scroll back, see. Hey, Jay, what's going on? I'm gonna scroll through. Danielle, let's see what's happening. I'll check. Watching the Bears game, it's a close game. Thanks, man. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. All right, Greg, what's going on? Dan Neary, how's your day? So let's scroll through. So. Yeah, we kind of did this. I really like this feel. So I was playing with white balance and camera, went to Kelvin and just dialed the color temperature down bluer, but iPhone is making it warm because I'm under tungsten light. But these actually have a blue tint. So if we go full frame, you can start to see that in the histogram, we have the blue moving to the right. So we cooled it off. So it still has that kind of monochromatic feel with the green apple just pops, right? So we did a few of those, and then I went warmer in the color tone, right? Just to warm up the flesh tone. It was just really, I mean, sick, straight out of camera, right, folks? Look at that, beautiful. And then we did some with a loose veil, and I said, okay, let's lose the apple, and we'll just go here. Garama, how's it going? All right, so this is with the 85, one four, and we're photographing at 2.2. There we go. 
and we're going to, again, pull in. And you could see it instinctually goes for the eye closest to the camera. So what's my zoom setting? It's 100%. Right. But that's just crazy, right? So here you can see the shallow depth of field, really. This eye, tack, sharp. And what impressed me the most is through the veil it picked it up. That was killer. Oftentimes with normal autofocus, I end up having to manually focus. Oh, remind me, let's talk about manual focus. I'm so excited. Um, it picked up the eye. And normally I have to manually focus that to focus through the veil, especially when you're into anything under 2814. But look, this eye's already soft, right? This eye's focused because she was kind of on an angle toward me. And it instinctually picks up the eye closest to the camera. Amazing. I mean, for portraits and things, it just makes the, your job that much easier. But look at how beautiful, buttery, smooth that is, right? Sick. So I'll be making a few prints. Dan, I'm going to be sending you prints, not digital files, buddy. These are awesome. So let's go back to our contact sheet, get to a different scene here. Um, yeah, I'm really loving this. To trying to show that shadow side information is just beautiful. And here's some black and white profile. But what's amazing is this fine detail that holds up straight out of camera, right? Beautiful. And we check our histogram. That's the most important thing. So I'm not clipping any of my highlights because we're shooting JPEG. So I'm really being diligent on my exposure, not relying on the crutch of RAW. Now, normally, because I would have the raw decode, and on a wedding day, I'd be a little bit looser on this and probably shoot to the right, but I wanted to make sure my JPEGs were balls on, going back old school kind of thinking, right? Before there was raw, we shot all JPEG, and these are just looking great right out of camera. So I'm super thrilled with that. All right, um, let's go down to a different scene. So here we go. This is where we went outside. I think you guys may or may not have tuned in and we're testing lights now. We went with some big strobes for this. This is Caroline being a stand-in model for me. I used a graduated Tiffin neutral density filter to kind of hold in the sky. And I'm kind of keeping my exposure in the right range to have detail in the sky. So 200 ISO, aperture 8, 1 1 60th of a second because we're in shade. And I had a Profoto B1 behind Caroline on a C-stand with the Magnum reflector to give us some backlight. And in the front, I had a Westcott rapid box strip for the Profoto just to give it that subtle fill. And there you can see I'm just varying the fill in the front from obviously fa flashed to a little bit more of fill. So then here's this gorgeous dress that Caroline brought in. And it's just worked amazingly well, the way it captured the light. And I did a few without the front light, and we did a few completely silhouetted. But, I mean, these are just stunning. And the thing I loved is the Profoto TTL on the R worked. High-speed sync worked. Um, manual, of course, worked. So that was great. My speed lights would have really struggled in this situation because I was shooting rapidly because I wanted to see the responsiveness of the camera. So here I put it in um, medium speed for the motor drive, you know, and it was a, a little bit windy, I have to say, so we were trying to catch that look. So I love this expression. So if I had to, we could crop out Caroline. And there is more detail than what's showing, again, because of the brightness of the background. But I mean, Willow just rocked it. And they're amazing because they wanted to get that dress to look absolutely perfect. So this was with the 24 to 70 EFR lens, which is a F4 IS. And I was playing with all the lenses. So EF lenses with the EFR converter with the control ring. Like I said, the 200-1.8, I've not seen that yet on screen. Oh, baby, look at this. Boom. There it is. There it is, baby. So we're zooming in, and this is at 24. Look at that beautiful expression. Zoomed in 100%, tack sharp, no problem acquiring focus because she was backlit in the shade. Ah, <sighs> let me take a breath, right? Bring on some comments. 
Dan Neary, you got it, baby. I'm printing them out on the uh, Pro 1000 and a couple on the Pro 2000. Curtis, there you go. Let, let me just see any questions. I'm kind of going through. Oh, Jay, you're going to London tomorrow. I love London. That'll be great. Cool. I'm just looking back. Kenny Kim. Looks amazing. You're going to really enjoy this. All right, cool. So again, if you guys have any questions, put them in the feed and I'll go back and get to them. Let me know if I'm not covering anything that you guys want to hear and see. So let me uh, go through a few more of these frames. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Be oh, look at that. Nice, 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 nice. Ah, lovely, lovely. And then, of course, I did a few just natural light silhouetted. We're trying to get the wind to cooperate with us. Nice. Sweet. The IS, the IS was helpful. So here we go. We did the switch. Now here I'm trying to dial in. So this is the antique was probably older than most folks watching, but this is the 200 1.8. And I started out at 2.8, so I didn't know at the distance and the backlight. And I went to manual mode so I can set my ambient light for the backlight and have light wrap around in the front. I didn't know if at that distance the face and eye detect would work. And it sure enough did. And then I turned on the strobes. So that's the Profoto B1 with the magnum reflector in the background. There we go. And I was trying to shoot through some of the bushes, you know, little bokeh effect. But look at this, man. And I'll show you a few right at uh, 1.8. But the detail I picked up in the dress, look at this. Straight out of camera, folks. So this is 200th of a second at 2.8. I was using a ProMedia Gear monopod because there is no IS, and that lens is heavy. Right? I, I struggle after about five minutes to handhold that thing and be steady. And I wanted these to to be beautiful images. So it just, it just, boom, worked, right? Look at this. And let me get to a few and I'll tell you where they're at 1.8. So we're still at 2.8, right? Oh, here we go. This is 1.8. So, cheers, baby. 1.8, dig that. So let me, um, I've not seen this on screen yet. Boom, 1.8. It's almost high definition. So here we go. 250th of a second, 100 ISO, 1.8, wide open. Amazing, amazing. So this rim light coming from behind is a pro photo with a magnum reflector on a C stand in the background. So yeah, it just, it just, I can't say enough. This is, this is something that I can't wait to have in my camera bag full time because it's another tool for when I'm doing different images. Like I have a board meeting tomorrow that I have to photograph at a law firm. I, I love that. Thank you, Willow. Thank you, team. Beautiful. Here, I'm going to pop this over here. Let the cards finish coming in. And if you guys got any questions, right, anything uh, in the feed, I miss having Miss Dawn here. She's on a girl's trip. Better than the 5D Mark IV is a question. How do I get to the bottom here? Who said that? Let me see. 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 Who asked? Sorry, I'm scrolling through. Green Bay, one point lead. All right. Uh, is it better than the Mark IV? In some respects, I have to say yes. Again, what's most exciting for me is the mirrorless and not for size and weight, but because of the information going directly to the image sensor. So we're not bending the light. We're not uh, trying to calibrate the lens because you got to think about it, folks. When we're looking through the viewfinder in a conventional SLR, single lens reflex, there's a mirror on an angle like this. So the light comes in, it hits the mirror. So when we focus, right, it, we're seeing it in focus on the mirror, and that's bouncing around and then out through the viewfinder. When that mirror lifts up and gets out of the way, there's a distance between that mirror and the image sensor. 
So the intelligence and the computers and all that stuff help it focus. So that's why there's the ability to tweak your focus. Oh, is it front focusing? Is it back focusing? Those sets of things. That's not an issue. So I had a far higher yield. I would say the best yield I've ever had with the 201.8 for the amount of frames in focus at 1.8 than I've ever had using that lens, right? I was able to shoot a little bit more freer and faster when it's even on my uh, EOS 1DX Mark II with the single focus point. I slow down and I put it in one shot and I confirm and I confirm and I confirm. Now, sometimes, like last week, we were at a wedding and we hung the dress up and I'm using the 5D4 and I'm using the uh, 24 1.4 lens, okay? And I wanted to shoot it at 1.4, so the lens jumped off the background. It was in this grand hall with big archway windows, okay? So I hold the eye to my view, I hold the camera to my eye, looking through the viewfinder, shoot the frame, review it, the dress is soft. I'm like, okay, so I know what to do. I do live view, so I live view, pop the mirror up. So live view is actually doing what this does, focusing then exactly off of the image sensor. So in live view, you punch in 100%, boom, confirm focus, it's in focus. And just so I didn't mess anything up, I switched the lens into manual, so it didn't change anything if I pushed a button. Took the frames, every one of them were tack sharp, right? Boom. That's what this is doing. So I believe the technology that is working with mirrorless, we're going to get more performance out of our lenses, if I'm phrasing that correctly. I'm a little tired, a little punchy. I know... Uh, Dan and Eric could probably articulate that and Drew far better than me. So let's, let's look for a different scene. Uh, these, these, these are just amazing. Uh, we'll ditch the balloon. Oh, so we did a few. This is with the 11 to 24. And this is with uh, more cowbell, meaning we lit it up a bit more. So yeah, at 24 millimeters on the lens, ISO 125, aperture 8. Shutter speed 100, and this is TTL with the Pro Photos, and it's just banging. Yeah, Ken, so the old lenses now become even better, so to speak. Yes, because the mirror is out of the way, and it's a direct, again, Rudy Winston, all those guys can articulate this better than me, but it isn't the light going in and bouncing around for focus. It's a direct transfer, boom, straight onto the uh, image sensor. Right? So, uh, I love this one. Here, you got to see this. The 11 to 24 is a sick lens, man. It's amazingly sharp, beautiful. Here we go. Awesome. So, dig that, right? I mean, crazy, beautiful, beautiful resolve. Now, with the 11 to 24, because I do not have the um, EF to EFR with the drop-in filter converter, which they do make, I didn't have the ND filter. So imagine if you put it an ND or a circular polarizer filter on this, then boom, it would just be even more outstanding, right? So uh, there you go. And here I was playing with the um, front control ring, not the front control ring, but the control ring on the EF2 EFR converter to dial down the exposure compensation and we're lowering because I was in FV mode and we'll have to do a whole podcast or live cast, whatever you want to call it, on FV mode. That's just killer cool. I left it in auto ISO and this brought my ISO down to help underexpose the sky. I mean, that the new FV mode is just crazy, just crazy. It's probably going to be my new favorite mode. You know, and that's now again, when I traded back to the 5D4, I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't miss the joystick. I intuitively picked up sliding my thumb around on the glass. So to focus, you know, I do this and you have the entire field of view for focus marks. Right. And I have to say the high eye point viewfinder. Amazing. Right. Just amazing. No eye strain. And if I wore my glasses, worked great. Oh, it, Willow killed it with the hat. So I did, you know, very kind of natural looking, get a little light under the hat, just, just so fun, just so fun. And then of course, 
I'm gonna go, where are we at? I think, are these the available light at 1.8? Uh, these are not, not yet. Let me get to those. And that background just goes buttery smooth. That's 2.5, but this is no flash. Flash didn't fire, but just amazing. Uh, is it this, these here? These here are F2 and no flash. No flash at all, F2. Now, the one thing I did notice with eye detect, and that's why I asked her to lift the brim up, we're in bright sunlight, right? So it creates a deep shadow. So when this brim of the hat went down kind of across her eyes like that, it lost the eye. It still went to face detect, but it lost the eye. So I just took my thumb, grabbed focus, and moved it over to the eye. <coughs> Boom. Locked on. Right. F2, baby. That's just sick. So instead of a uh, 200 F2, the current one, which is a hell of a lot lighter <laughs> than my 200 1.8, I just love this lens. I just love this lens. So here you go, F2, boom, here we go. Let's let that thing, look at, look at, just crazy resolve, right? This is like we're doing it in live view, but only it's much faster than being in live view. Um, all right, guys, let me just see where we're at. All the images are in. I know I did a couple in black and white. And th this black and white image, I mean, I just love it. Available light. Hey, Steve, what's going on, man? Long time since our Bella days. Cool beans, man. Look at that. In camera, black and white, just stunning. Um, and here's where we did the back of the dress walk. And here's that shaft of light. I found this little wedge of light coming through the buildings. And it just nailed it. Right? Now, look at the dynamic range. I hope you can appreciate it. Let's see, can the iPhone? I mean, Willow. Oh, I didn't to turn the camera. There we go. Focus on Willow. Come on, iPhone, pick up the metering. It's not uh, darkening down. But anyways, this is perfectly exposed, and yet there's still lots of information in the shadow, and her face is not blown out, right? And here she was just kind of walking away, looking, oh, money. I'll just kind of clone that out. Oh, and, I, and again, I was trying to be diligent in camera. And you can see how narrow this little shaft of light was. You know, and I'm down on the ground with the 201.8. And boom, look at this. Here, we'll make, she did some spins, right? It's just so much fun. So again, just in the JPEG, I could see more dynamic range. Beautiful, beautiful. Thanks, Dan. I gotta say thank you for letting me play with this thing. It's been amazing, loving it. Yeah, I definitely gotta have this in my bag. You know, I have to say as of today, right now, if I was gonna go out with two bodies, I'd grab the 1DX and I would grab the R because I could do different things with the R you know, not that I don't like the 5D4, that's not it at all. It's just a different tool, the silent mode, the wide open, and those sets of things. And the video, dedicated video button, where you could have your settings set to video that are different from the settings you could have set to still photos. So that's just huge. You know, and I plan on doing a short film, if I get to hold on to this enough, on a cool old world master hat maker in Chicago. All right, here we go, dig this. So this is in a gold um, kind of metal background with a mirror behind it. And I wanted to go for that gold on gold look. And this is a really cool, Caroline, please forgive me, but uh, I think she said this is a vintage Pucci dress. It's over my head, but just amazing. So then I thought well, while we were shooting this, why don't we gel everything green to bring out the green and just totally snoot Willow, so you could see the evolution of that idea. So he kept it warm on warm, right? And then down here, you know, I was dialing in the snoot where we got the green. Here we go. Here's the first. So first I want to dial in the snoot. Come on, get that exposure. There we go. 
So I get the snoot aimed and exposed properly on Willow's face. And this is a 600 EXRT in manual mode. So I get consistency frame to frame to frame using a mag mod mag beam with a circle mask, right? And then I turned the white light off or neutral light and I had a green gel to try and pop out the green kind of like Wizard of Oz look and then put the white light on Willow, you know, to do green on green. But look how creative you could be in a heartbeat with speed lights and gels on location. So cool. So cool. Um, then we decided, well, let's change it. What would it look like? Purple. So we did purple with a white neutral light. All right. That worked out really well. The side views were really nice. Like, I really like this look. That was beautiful. Kick butt. Um, and then so I decided, well, let's try some continuous light. So these images are done with continuous light. So this is done with a uh, low pro gun light for my backlight and a Westcott ice light with the barn door on it to give us this very tight sliver of light on Willow's face. So let me pull up one of uh, a close up shot. So here we go. So this was 2500 ISO. Dig that, baby. Beautiful. Beautiful. No noise. Beautiful, tight structure. Very film-like feel. 2500 ISO. And this is the 24 to 105 wide open F4, right? Just nice. And I'm in Kelvin, so I'm able to control the warmth of the file. So I wanted it to be purposely warm. And then these I just loved because uh, Willow just knows her body so well and the look so well. So he just changed it up and it's just boom. All in all, a great day. Great day. Good fun. Thanks to the team. Uh, Cannon, I'm having a ball with this R. Hopefully I got it for a few more days. I got some things planned. Um, going up in a tower crane in Chicago to do a, a short film in uh, some stills of a tower crane operator and then some cool night shooting on Wednesday and then hopefully the master hat maker. He makes these things by hand later, later on. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Drop your questions in the feed. Sorry I ran so long, but I'm really digging this stuff. If you like it, please share it out. And again, put your comments in the feed. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Talk to you later.